Hi guys, welcome to this session on factorization. In this session, we'll be talking about various ways to factorize a polynomial. But before that, let's first make our understanding clear of polynomials. So let's define a polynomial. So what is a polynomial? Any function of x in the form a0 x to the power n plus a1 x to the power n minus 1 plus dot dot a n minus 1 x plus a n any equation in that format is known as a polynomial equation so an example of this format would be um, say 3x square so one example would be say 3x square plus 5x plus 2 so this is an uh, this is a polynomial expression so it is of the format a 0 x to the power n so here a 0 is equals to 3 and the value of n is equals to 2 so a 1 would be 5 n minus 1 is equals to 1 and a n is equals to the last term that is 2 so any form uh, any equation of this form is a polynomial another example would be a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d so here again it is of the same format so as you know n is 3 and the first term a 0 is a so n minus 1 is 2 the second term a 1 is b and so on and so forth so these are some examples of a polynomial now before going further let us understand some of the terminology that are used in a when defining a polynomial first of all what is a degree of a polynomial a degree is the highest power of x in a polynomial so for example in this polynomial the highest power of x is n so the degree of this equation is n so degree would be the highest power highest power of x that would be the degree of this polynomial next let's say we have this polynomial so the degree is the highest power of x so the degree for this polynomial is will be equal to 2 uh, for this polynomial the degree would be equal to 3 so i hope you understood the concept of a degree of a polynomial right next let us move on to the next definition that is terms so terms are each and every component of a polynomial is known as a term so a1 x n minus 1 so this is a term of the polynomial a0 x to the power n this is also another term this is also another term a n is the last term so all these components of the polynomial are known as the term so these are the terms of a polynomial for, for example these questions we have three terms first term is 3x square the second term is 5x and the third term is 2 for this example we have the first term is ax cube second term is bx square third term is cx and fourth term is d so each and every component is known as the term of a polynomial right now let's understand what is a coefficient so coefficient is the constant part of x so suppose we have one term a0 x to the power n so the coefficient of so here the coefficient of x to the power n is equals to a0 so the constant part of the variable is known as the coefficient for example the coefficient of 3x cube is 3 so this is the coefficient the coefficient of 5x is 5 the coefficient of ax cube the coefficient is equals to a right so the constant term involved in a power of x or involved with the variable x is known as the coefficient now let us understand what is a zero polynomial so zero polynomial is a polynomial that is just the value zero so if fx is equals to zero such a polynomial is known as a zero polynomial so if, if we put it in this equation all the term terms a0 to a n and x to the power and x as well should be equals to 0 so then we get a 0 polynomial so uh, an, another important thing is the degree of this polynomial is not defined so degree of a 0 polynomial is not defined 
right so this is a zero polynomial next is a non zero constant polynomial now what is a non zero constant polynomial so non zero constant polynomial is of the form fx equals to c c is a any constant value for example fx is equals to 3 it would not have any terms involving x so the degree of so we can also write it as 3 times x to the power 0 so the degree of this polynomial degree of this polynomial is is equals to 0 so the degree of this polynomial is equal to 0 and it is called a non zero constant polynomial the, the value c cannot be zero so here the value c cannot be zero if c is equals to zero we call it as a zero polynomial in which the degree is not defined so i hope all the terminology involved in a polynomial equation is clear to you guys so with this understanding let's move on now let us understand some of the common polynomials that are used and how to find the degree of a polynomial so in the, in the previous slide we already discussed how to uh, find a degree of a polynomial here we'll give some illustrative examples so let's say a linear polynomial the example of a linear polynomial would be say 7x plus 2 so here the degree is the highest power of x so x has a highest power of 1 so the degree is going to be degree will be equal to 1 a quadratic polynomial will have a degree 2 it is of the form a x square plus b or let's say 2 x square plus 1 so here the degree will be 2 cubic polynomial is of the format a cube i'm sorry a a x cube plus b x square plus cx plus d so this is the format of a cubic polynomial and it will have a degree equal to 3 right so by quadratic similarly will have a degree equal to 4 so say ax to the power 4 plus bx cube plus you know dot dot and we don't need to have a term of x uh, of every power of x so we can just have x, x to the power 4 plus bx cube plus for example a constant d so this is also a polynomial of the of uh, a degree 4 so we don't need so please understand we don't, don't need each and every term of x of every power right and a non-zero constant polynomial example would be say for example 3 3 is a non-zero constant polynomial right so these are a few examples of polynomials of various degrees let's now take a polynomial and try to find out the degree of that polynomial right so but before that let's talk about polynomial equation so what is a polynomial equation a polynomial equation is whenever we have a polynomial and we equate that to zero so for example let's say we have 3x square plus 4x uh, 3x square plus 4x plus 5 so whenever we equate that to 0 we get uh, so whenever we equate that to 0 so let's say we have uh, this one and we equate this to 0 so that is known as a polynomial equation it is of the format fx is equals to 0 so so like like it's written a general form of a polynomial equation will be this one and if it's of the format fx is equals to 0 then it's called a polynomial of degree n here degree n is the highest power of x here it will be a polynomial equation of degree 2 because the highest power of x here would be 2 now let's find the degree of various polynomials so here we have a polynomial equation and here the highest power of x is 2 so this is a polynomial equation of degree 2 similarly in this equation we have the highest power of x as 3 so this is a polynomial equation of degree 3 and if it is of the format fx is equals to 0 it's also of the format fx is equals to 0 so such a equation is known as a polynomial equation and we are now i hope you guys are now comfortable in finding the degree of a given polynomial equation so with this understanding let's move on 
So now understand how we equate two polynomials. Let's say we have the condition fx is equals to gx and these two polynomials are of same degree. They has to be of same degree. If we equate them, they has to be of same degree. So if you are given such a condition, so each and every term of this polynomial should be equal. So a0 must be equal to c0, a1 must be equal to c1, a2 must be equal to c2 and all the way up to a n must be equal to c n. Only if this condition is satisfied then we can call these two polynomials as equal polynomials. If they are of the same format or if they have the same degree then each and every term of those polynomial has to be equal. Right? Now let's understand how do we divide a polynomial. So dividing a polynomial. So okay here there is one mistake qx okay okay and okay so if we have a polynomial say gx and we want to divide another polynomial fx and we have we be divided with another polynomial gx and we get a quotient that is qx plus a remainder that is r Right, so any number if we divide by another number we get a quotient and we get another reminder so for example let's say we divide uh, 7 with 2 right when we divide 7 with 2 we get a quotient so 3 times 2 is 6 so we'll get 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 so when we divide the whole thing divide by 2 so we get this so here this uh, so this term 2 is the quotient and 1 is the remainder right so similarly when we when we divide a polynomial we also get a quotient and and a remainder right here the remainder can be equal to 0 if uh, if this gx is a factor if gx is a factor then the remainder will be equal to 0 if gx is not a factor then there will be a non-zero remainder but the degree of this remainder so the degree of this remainder must be lesser than the degree of the divisor divisor is a number by which the polynomial is getting divided so i know these are all very abstract concepts so we'll illustrate this with the help of an example okay so let's illustrate this concept with the help of an example let us take two polynomials. Let's say 3x square plus 5x plus 9. And we want to divide it with another polynomial of a lower degree. So let's take um, x plus 1. So we'll, we'll divide this polynomial with the polynomial x plus 1. So for our reference, fx is equals to 3x square plus 5x plus 9 and uh, gx is equals to x plus 1. So we have these two polynomials and we are dividing. So first of all, we'll do the general rules of division. So we want to eliminate x square. So we multiply this entire uh, equation with 3x so the first term is 3x so we get 3x square plus 3x now we subtract this so 3x square 3x square get cancelled 5x minus 3x is 2x so now we have 2x plus 9 so this entire equation we multiply it with 2 so 2 we get 2x plus 2 and when we subtract it 2x 2x gets cancelled and the remainder here is 7 so the quotient qx obtained is equals to 3x plus 2 and the remainder obtained is 7 so here the degree of this remainder so if you see the degree of this remainder that is equals to 1 and the degree 
of the divisor that is gx is equals to 1 sorry here the remainder the degree is 0 and the degree of gx is x plus 1 so the degree would be 1 the highest power of x is 1 for the remainder the highest power of x is 0 we can write as 7x to the power 0 so the degree of this is 0 so as the condition as we already told this degree so the degree of r is less than the degree of gx so i hope the previous equations are clear to you now so the previous conditions that if fx is a polynomial if it is divided by another polynomial gx then it will be it we can write it in the format fx is equals to gx times qx plus rx where rx is the remainder it can be written in this format when either rx equals to 0 or the degree of rx is less than the degree of the non-zero polynomial with which it is getting divided right so i hope the concept is clear on this one so with this we'll move on to our next slide factor of a polynomial so what does it mean by factor of a polynomial factor of a polynomial means if we substitute that value or if we divide the the polynomial with the factor the remainder should be zero for example let us take this equation x square plus 6x plus 8 and let us do the remainder let us do the division and see how much the remainder is right so let's have uh, x square so let's have x square plus 6x plus 8 and let's divide this one with x plus 2 if the remainder will be 0 then we can say this x plus 2 is a factor so let's try that so let's multiply x plus 2 with x so we get x here and we get here x square plus 2x so we subtract this this part gets cancelled we have 4x plus 8 now we multiply the divisor with 4 x plus 4 so we get 4 times x is 4x and 2 times 4 is 8 so we have 4x plus 8 so if we subtract it we get 0 so here the remainder remainder is equals to 0 so we can say that x plus 2 so x plus 2 is a factor of factor of x square plus 6x plus 8 so whenever a polynomial will divide another polynomial so that polynomial or the divisor is going to be the factor of the polynomial which it divides so i hope this is clear to you so let's read the definition one time so a non-zero polynomial gx is a factor of a polynomial fx if on dividing fx by gx the remainder equal to zero like we divided uh, fx with the factor so i have listed uh, two polynomials with, with given factors when i divided this polynomial with this then the remainder became zero so we could say that this is a factor of this one similarly here we have a cubic equation cubic polynomial when we divide by x minus 3 we get the remainder as 0 so we can call x minus 3 as a factor of that polynomial okay i hope uh, this is also clear to you so we'll move on to our next segment value of a polynomial right how to determine a value of a polynomial at a constant value let's say we have a polynomial of the format 3x square plus x plus 1 let's say we have this polynomial and we are asked to find f of 1 so the value of a polynomial at any constant value is if we substitute the value of x with that constant value for example if we have this so we can substitute x as 1 so 3 times 1 square plus 1 plus 1 so 3 times 1 square is 3 plus 1 plus 1 3 plus 2 which is equals to 5 what would be f2 f2 if we substitute x with 2 so 3 times 2 square 2 square is 4 4 times 3 is 12 
plus x in place of x we put 2 so 12 plus 2 and we have the constant term which is not dependent on x so that will remain the same so 12 plus 2 14 plus 1 15 so f2 equals to 15 similarly f3 same thing we substitute x with 3 so 3 times 3 square 3 times 3 square plus 3 plus 1 so 3 times 3 square is 27 plus 3 is 30 plus 1 31 so f3 is 31 so very simple if we substitute x with that constant value we'll get the value of the polynomial at that constant value so if we have fx equals to this polynomial then whichever value we substitute for x we get the value for that particular value right okay so let's move on to the next concept roots of a polynomial so we, we we talked about factors of a polynomial so basically the concept of root is whenever we substitute that value into the polynomial the polynomial should yield a zero value then we'll call that as a root of the polynomial so root and factors are very closely related so suppose we talked about value right so suppose if we have these uh, polynomial let's say we have this polynomial this polynomial is of the format x square plus 6x plus 8 so here it is of the format this so here if we substitute x equals to minus 2 so let's uh, have this polynomial here so x square plus 6x plus 8 so here if we substitute so here we know that x plus 2 is a factor of this so if we substitute x equals to minus 2 in this equation the resultant should be 0 if that is the case then this this minus 2 is a factor of this polynomial let's substitute minus 2 here so minus 2 square is so minus 2 whole square plus 6 times minus 2 plus 8 so let's see how much this yields so minus 2 square is 4 6 times minus 2 is minus 12 plus 8 so 8 plus 4 12 minus 12 that is 0 so since f of minus 2 is equals to 0 so minus 2 is a factor of this equation so here uh, we are substituting minus 2 and minus 4 i'm sorry here the it's written wrong similarly if we put minus 4 so f of minus 4 uh, since x plus 4 is a factor so if we substitute x is equals to minus 4 in this polynomial let's see how much we get so minus 4 square is so minus I'll write it down minus 4 square plus 6 times minus 4 plus 8 right we have this equation and by simplifying it minus 4 square is positive 16 and we have minus 6 times minus 4 is minus 24 plus 8 so 16 plus 8 is 24 minus 24 is 0 so since f minus 4 is equals to 0 f minus 2 equal to 0 so minus 2 and minus 4 are factors of so we can call minus 2 and minus 4 as factors of of this equation right similarly we have this equation x cube plus uh, x cube minus 5x square plus 7x minus 3 so we already talked about this equation before and we know that x minus 3 is a factor of this equation so since x minus 3 is a factor of this equation when we substitute x equals to 3 so we can call 3 as a factor of this equation if we substitute 3 in this equation the resultant should be 0 or it should satisfy the equation so what is 3 cube 3 cube is 27 minus 5 into 3 square is 9 5 times 9 is 45 plus 7 times 3 is 21 minus 3 so 27 and 21 makes it 48 and minus 45 minus 3 is minus 48 so we get a value of 0 so since f3 is 0 so 3 is a factor of so 3 is a factor of this polynomial right 3 is a factor so if you understood what is written here so if fx is equals to 0 satisfies this equation then this alpha will be if f alpha is equals to 0 then alpha is a factor of this equation 
or alpha is a root of this polynomial equation and we can write x minus alpha is a factor of this equation and alpha is the root of this equation root of this equation if f of alpha f of alpha is equals to 0 if f of alpha equals to 0 we can call alpha as the root of the equation and x minus alpha will be a factor of this equation right so we already discussed this through these two illustrative examples right i hope that is clear to you so now we'll move on to an interesting concept of remainder theorem so what is a remainder theorem so the remainder theorem is very simple it states that if a polynomial fx so it states that if a polynomial fx if a polynomial fx is divided by x minus alpha so if it is divided by by x minus alpha then the remainder would be what is the remainder remainder would be equal to f of alpha right so the remainder is f of alpha so that is the remainder theorem so this fx if fx is divided by x minus alpha the remainder will be f of alpha so let's quickly try to understand what it says but before we do that let's try to prove this uh, equation prove this theorem right so for example if we have this polynomial fx let's say it, it can be any polynomial of the format x to the power n plus x to the power n minus 1 and you know of that format right a to the power a 0 x to the power n plus a 1 x to the power n minus 1 and so on and so forth let it be any polynomial equation right so if we divide it with a uh, with x minus alpha then we'll get a quotient and we get a remainder right so we'll write it in that format so if we divide it with x minus alpha we get a quotient x minus alpha we get a quotient that is qx and we get some remainder so if it is a factor this remainder may be zero if it's not a factor the remainder may not be zero but we can get some something of this format right now let's substitute alpha in this equation so if we substitute alpha in this equation f of alpha but do we get so this x minus alpha becomes in place of x we will substitute alpha so alpha minus alpha times qx plus r so basically alpha minus alpha times qx is zero and f of alpha is the remainder so that is what we already said so if a polynomial fx is divided by x minus alpha the remainder will be equal to f of alpha so this is what we can prove from this simple equation right so now there are two corollary of this equation let us try to prove that again very simple and very much related to what we already said so the corollary is if the uh, if fx is divided by x plus alpha if fx is divided by x plus alpha then the remainder is equals to so the remainder remainder will be is equals to f of minus alpha right that is what is the corollary one so we'll call it as a corollary one right that is a sub part of the theorem it's not the main theorem but this is also an important thing that in or important shortcut then you can that you can use in your uh, you know problems that you are going to solve it right so x plus alpha so x plus alpha can be written in that format x minus of minus alpha we can write x plus alpha in this format x minus of minus alpha so when we divide the polynomial with x minus minus alpha we can write the polynomial in the same format that we wrote previously is x minus of minus alpha times uh, gx or qx that is the quotient plus 
some remainder which may or may not be zero based on the um, whether it is a factor or not so now if we put f of minus alpha here so here again we will get minus alpha minus of minus alpha times qx plus the remainder right so again minus of minus alpha minus this if we simplify it so we get minus alpha minus of minus alpha is a power plus alpha times qx plus r right so times qx plus r so again it's the same thing because this part is becoming zero so it's going to be the remainder so now we got the proof so f of minus alpha is the remainder so when x is or when the fx so when fx is divided by x plus alpha then the remainder is f of minus alpha right so i hope this part is clear to you we have another corollary ne next so we'll